Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good morning to everybody. Glad you're here this morning. Got a few announcements to make this uh, this morning. Uh, don't, well, really, only one that I know of, and that is the people's table is uh, coming Tuesday, 27th. And the church office is going to be closed Monday through Thursday, it looks like. Any, are there any other announcements? Well, like I said, we're glad everybody's here this morning, and all those watching online, we welcome you. If you're a visitor with us, we, uh, we'd ask that you fill out the visitor's slip that's in the in the bulletin, and they also register your attendance if you wouldn't mind on the, uh, on the pads that are in the center aisle of the pews. Any other announcements? Michelle may be in sometime Tuesday for a little while. Okay, Michelle may be in sometime on Tuesday. Would you stand with me? Only singing Emmanuel, Emmanuel.
to remain standing and join with me in the Apostles' Creed found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. See, tell me, our, our church is kind of unbalanced this morning. We got way over here and over here. So, anyway, if anybody gets lost in this area, we'll find you and get you back to your group. But we're glad to have each of you here today. Now is the time when we light our Christmas candle and all, all the candles on our table. And as uh, Dawn does that, I want to share with you from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through, uh, well, actually, verses 13. It said, suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces were with the angels, praising God. And it's, this is not talking about me, it's talking about a young girl. It says, as a young girl, I found the Christmas season to be tremendously exciting. And I've been excited this morning. I'm sorry. I got I was rushing Gary to get the video started, and I was trying to find the accurate light, and then I, I realized I didn't need to do it myself. And it just excited this morning. And they told me up here to calm down, so I'm trying to calm down. But it's a season for singing and celebrating. And almost everyone in the village would buy new clothes. The Christmas spirit would be felt all around, especially at the church, and the sounds of the singing and drumming. And last night, if you were uh, out here just for a second, I was crossing through the yard of the car, you could hear at a certain time, you could hear the bells from one of the recent uh, nearby churches ringing. And it's just a, such a blessing to hear that. So the sounds are in the air. And everyone in the village here, she said, knew Christmas was a time to eat the best meals. Even those who could not afford to buy meat or any other time of the year would make sure they had something special for Christmas. On Christmas Day, the singing, the clapping of hands, the drumming uh, seemed to join with the heavenly host in praising God. I imagine that there are no less excitement when the angel Lord appeared to the shepherds in the field who were watching over their sheep. After the angel had told them the good news of the birth of Christ, there appeared a multitude of angels praising God. In this Christmas season, let us join in singing for Christ is born. Let us announce the good news of His birth all around us that others can come and celebrate the joy of Christmas with us. Now let us pray. Dear Lord, may the joy of Christmas fill our hearts as we offer our praise to You in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now our Old Testament lesson, our Psalms, we'll be reading this morning is from, from uh, Psalms uh, 98. If you have your pew Bible with you today, you'd like to turn with us. It is on page, page 551. Let us hear God's word. O oh, sing the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand, His holy arm, have gotten Him victory. The Lord has made known His victory. He has revealed His vindication to the side of the nations. He has remembered 
and has his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth break forth in joyous, joyous songs and sing praise. Sing praise to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of horn. Make a joyful noise before the King of the Lord, the King of the Lord, and let the sea roar and all, fill, and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for He is coming to judge the earth. He would judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Other prayers today we can lift up. Certainly we'll lift up Tony today. He's not able to be with us. He's, he's had COVID and he's been sick and I also remember this family too. They've lost a loved one this week, Debbie's brother. And so we just want to keep you all in our prayers. And uh, I want to say Matthew did a wonderful job uh, at your uncle's funeral. And I know everybody's real pleased. And I know it took a lot to do that. Anyone else? Those that are traveling. Yes, those are traveling. Scott, if he's listening, we miss you. But we've got a substitute, so you better straighten up. But we do miss you, Scott. Hope you're having a great time. And uh, I think uh, Carol has gone to Florida. She's gone to Snowbird, so y'all pray for her. She travels. <coughs> Anyone else? Uh, my sister got the flu today. Remember your sister, Gary. Some of them's got the sleep ins this morning too. I don't know if we got a few of that. <laughs> Anyone else? I don't envy parents so that help Sandy do all the putting together stuff because I don't miss that part. The toys are bigger now. So. Anyone else? Glad to see each of you back here. It's been out sick. Uh, let's pray for one another. I want to thank you, the church, this last week who helped make sure those uh, the people were out in the cold had a place to stay. Uh, we put up folks in three different rooms, I know, and then the, the other part had like... There were several rooms. I think they had 30 total rooms. I don't know how many exactly they ended up. 40 last night. 40 last night. So they have really done well. And you know what? By opening the door here at the church, I think it's helped others get on board. And we're excited about that because there are other churches now helping out. And God is good, right? And all the time, God is good. Anyone else before we pray? Let us go, young man. God, we come before you with great thanksgiving because, Lord, you are always there for us. And we do sing today with joy and enthusiasm because this is the day we celebrate the birth of Christ. God, how good it is to know your Son has come into this world to, to change the direction of once with sin and sorrow, now to joy and expectation of great things. God, we pray for the sick and the afflicted. We pray for those who are not able to be here this morning for whatever reason. Many are homesick. Many, Lord, are out of town and family. And God, we know that many are watching online, Lord, that they can uh, be part of the church family, even in a distance. And God, we pray for them and we lift them up. And Lord, help us that are here today realize how blessed we are. And Lord, look to you for the guidance in our life that we can always celebrate Christmas each day, for Lord, you are in our hearts. And God, as we pray today, let us pray the prayer you our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. You're able, infant holy, infant holy, it's on page 229.
be seated. Now is another exciting time in our, our service. It's, it's children's time. Y'all come on down. This is awesome. I tell you. I'm going to set it right over here just a minute. So I'm going to follow okay? You're pretty excited about your present, aren't you? Yeah. I am too. I got a basketball goal. Got a basketball goal? Yeah. Is it heated? <laughs> is it heated? Because <laughs> I'm not playing this. You got four Nerf guns? What else did y'all get? A hot chocolate bomb. A hot chocolate bomb. Oh, that is the bomb, right? <laughs> A Hershey kiss is that big? It takes me a month to eat that thing. Wow. I got a big one. Got a big one? You know, I got a present yesterday. You know what my present was? Y'all not going to believe it. Does any of y'all weigh 100 pounds? No. Guess what? I lost 100 pounds. <laughs> yesterday, when I weighed, I was like, could y'all hear me screaming? I was screaming. <laughs> I was going, I'm almost not skinny. <laughs> no, I'm, I did. I lose 100 pounds, and that's a big deal. That's like a present for me. It took me a while. To, since I met you in June, I've lost 100 pounds. So I'm happy about that. You know what else I got? It, it did. It took a long It didn't take long to put it on, but it took a long time to get it off. Uh, you know what else we got for Christmas today? Jesus. Isn't that pretty awesome? Jesus makes all this happen. That's why we celebrate. You got wireless headphones? You think Jesus wore hot wireless headphones? Huh? I bet he did. I bet he had I bet he had a way of hearing things we did. But let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus is a pretty awesome gift. You know why? Because he came into the world so you and I could be happy, we can have peace, and we can have hope. Have you been happy this morning? So Jesus is working in it. Have you have you had, have you got hope? Have you got hope? I do too. You know, I got great hope because I know that, that God has got great things going to happen for us. And so these presents are really neat. But the greatest present that we got is when Jesus came in the world. And you, can you imagine them, all those shepherds and those wise people sitting around and waiting for Jesus to be born? And when they got there, how excited they were. So they brought gifts. They was just singing and praising. And it says, it's kind of like the, the waves were clapping. And the hills were singing, and everything was going on. And that, I guess that's why I'm so excited this morning. Is what? What? What don't have mouths? I'm trying to say mouths. Oh, you're talking about hills and stuff. But it's kind of symbolic. It's symbolic. It's like it's like the world is so excited that even the mountains. I understood what you said. Now the hills don't have mouths. I didn't understand. But the, the, mouth, a mouth, like I got. But so they, they, but it's like the world is celebrating so much. And so when y'all get, when y'all get excited, y'all celebrate. Do you scream and holler and say, "I can't, I can't believe this"? Was y'all excited this morning when you woke up? Did you? Did you run in there and look around the tree and say, "What is that mine?" Did y'all do that? Yeah. Elf on the shelf. You have elf on the shelf. Santa put the tree in the middle of the floor. They are excited this morning. You know that? 
And I'm excited. And that's what Christmas is about. It's excitement. And so today I want you to be excited. And I want you to know that I'm not going to get a word in. <laughs> I just feel like I'm part of the group right now. So we're going to pray this morning. And we're going to thank God for the excitement He gives us. And then you've got, i got a whole bench full of presents over there that Tammy and Taplin and Randall all been put together. You know why? Because they love you so much. They want you to have something special. Some people here, we got Christmas presents. Yeah. So let's pray together, okay? Let's just pull our excitement down just for a second. Let's pray. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for these young people. God, may just bless our hearts every Sunday. They're so excited about what's going on in life. God, may we just have that same zeal on this Christmas Sunday. Lord, every day, thanking you for another day in the name of Jesus. Amen. I got your Pokemon right here. Don't forget them. And y'all get your. She's going to tell you which one to get. Yes, boys, you get one for me. Greatest girls. Okay. Come on, Lila. Can I take me? You can be. They're almost as excited whenever uh, I said yes to Tammy about marrying me. That's how excited they are. I think they're all the same. Oh yeah. Go ask the ushers coming out to see what we're going We got the best looking ushers today ever. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for those that have uh, come, Lord, to celebrate today, to give from the heart and to realize how blessed we really are. God, let us give back this portion now, thanking you, Lord, for all the blessings. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Kids are really excited this morning, aren't they? You know, we should all be kids at heart and appreciate their excitement because it's it's uh, it's intoxicating and it's uh, it's a contagious thing. And it's kind of nice. And thank you for bringing them to church today because you know they can't drive themselves. We've got to have you to bring them. So thank you for bringing them. This morning, uh, I'd like you if you would look with me to Matthew chapter two. Verses 13 to 23. And let us hear God's word on page 2 in Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 23. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. And when Herod saw that he had, when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem that were two years old and under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentations. Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because there was no more. And when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in the dream of Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. And Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. And, and when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in, in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. And there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that it had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In my excitement today, there are people that are not excited about Christmas. There are people that are not getting up this morning and excited about opening presents and, and sharing and enjoying their time with the children and coming to church and singing songs and singing praises. There are people in the world who are much like Herod that says, I wish this would just all go away. And that's really sad. It's really sad. Because they're missing out on the message that God gives us through the prophets that reminds us that Jesus will be one who brings hope and peace and love. I can't imagine Christmas without some excitement. I can't imagine a time of not going to church. This is, I was telling Donald in the back, or Don, that this is the Super Bowl of church. I mean, this is like big time. This and Easter, I mean, this is, you know, some folks are talking about calling off church. I can't even imagine. Unless we have like a major blizzard or something, you know, or maybe the temperature's below three, I guess. But that's it. I mean, I, we've got to have, have church because if we can make it here, this is the time when we really, as Christians, begin to celebrate our beginnings. When God sent His Son. <coughs> We should be excited. We should not hold anything back. We should be like the hills that don't have mouths, as I reminded. Should be singing and telling the world that Jesus, the Christ child, has come. And like the waves that clap together, the visual you can get of that, of celebrating the excitement, Jesus has come. I just want to be there. I want to see all that's going on. I want to be. I want to be like the people who, when something happens on the interstate, I want to be rubbernecking. I want to look and see if I can see what's going on. I want to have that same excitement that the angels had when they heard his name shall be called Emmanuel. I want to have that same excitement. But through the world, there are those who who say "Bah humbug," and, and there's some that even are like the Grinch. But you know what? I like the Grinch because I like the rest of the story. Like Paul Harvey, I know some of y'all are not old enough to know who Paul Harvey is, but I know some are. But Paul Harvey always had the end of it. He said, now the rest of the story. And I always look forward to hearing the rest of the story to see what was going to happen. And the Grinch is one, and I've got, uh, Tim gave me a pillow that's got the Grinch where he starts out with all this darkness on him, and then you peel it back and you see this Grinch with a smile on his face. 
And then I got that little dog that's with the Grinch. Poor thing. I mean, the Grinch ki almost killed that little dog. That little dog was trying to pull the sled and all that. Anyway, watch the story sometime. But at the end, the Grinch, it says, his heart began to grow. It was almost about to bust. And that's, that's the way I want us to be. We may be like the Grinch. We may be bah humbug. We may be like those up here who did not realize or understand the power of God in the way Jesus brought. But our hearts began to change when Jesus begins to fill the air. When His Spirit begins to overcome us and we realize that we can't hold our emotions back because Jesus has come. It's exciting. It gives me cold chill bumps and I'm not standing on the air vent. Amen? Are y'all awake this morning? I'll give you one of the boys uh, chocolate bombs. They'll wake you up. I tried that the other day. I thought, you know, after I, I had some hot chocolate and let me tell you, that's like 8,000 grams of sugar in that thing. And you almost have a heart attack. But the world is saying we don't need Jesus. The world is turning its back on Jesus. The world is pushing Him away. But even in all the chaos of trying to push Him away as Herod did, and trying to kill Him, and all the children that died because of it, and it says that a voice that was crying out, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel was weeping for her children. But God still found a way to send us hope. To send us peace. To give us something to be excited about. As a kid, I remember we lived in an old frame house, old weatherboard house growing up. There's a few cracks in the floor. We had an old wood stove, old, I call it a pot belly stove. It was, um, or you, some people might call it a preacher stove. Depends on how your preacher looks. But anyway, uh, we put that stove in the middle of the floor and, and it heated the whole house. I mean, we loaded it with wood. No matter how much money, it was never enough to keep the house warm. We, and our old windows had cracks in them, you know, and occasionally one of the pane glass would get broken, you'd have to fill it up or whatever. It was a pretty rough situation. And I guess if I look back, I guess, boy, we had it rough. I didn't know how rough we had it. We was actually probably poor, and I didn't know it. But everybody else was like us, so I didn't think anything about it. But we were never sad. We always had food on the table. Mom made sure we had clothes, whether she had to sew them or we had to get them from uh, Sears catalog. I know you know what that is. J.C. Penney's, that was a big thing, looking through the catalog before Christmas. But something always happened on Christmas Eve in that little old house. We couldn't wait till Christmas. We got, I don't know how many whippings I got for not going to bed. I mean, I don't tell you how many times I was sneaking around trying to see what was going on. And mom and dad have to say, get yourself in that bed. You're not going to get Christmas if you don't get in bed. And, and they would threaten us and everything else. And we'd still be like the little kids on the, the Hallmark shows. We're peeping around trying to see what's going on. Because we were so excited to see what's going to happen. And we may have only got one or two gifts. But you know what? We were so excited to get those gifts. And we always were so excited because we'd go to granddads and grandmoms. And they'd have us a couple of little packages. We were excited to see the face when we gave them something that we made or gave them and they, their face would light up. You know, we used to make things for each other back then. And their face would light up. And then as I got older, I got a little bit jaded about it. You know, I'd say, well, we're going to Grandpa's. He's going to give us some socks, you know. I like socks now. And I, and I would go to Grandpa's and they'd give us socks and, and, grand, and Dad and Mom would always say, now you act excited when you get those socks. And we'd say, yay, we're getting socks. You know? But as I got older, I began to appreciate those socks more and more. Because Granddad wanted my feet to be warm. He'd give me socks and gloves. Make sure I was warm and cold. He'd give me a little thing of candy to make sure we had food. Oranges in our stockings. See, his excitement was seeing us happy. And our excitement changes over the years in Christmas. But the excitement is knowing you have family, knowing you can see the smile on your face, knowing you still have them present with you, 
and knowing that God loved you more than words could ever measure. <coughs> so you got a lot to be excited about today, don't we? If you got family, you should be excited. If you got the family's memories, you should be excited. <coughs> if you got socks, you should be excited. If you got an orange in your stocking, enjoy. Those days are precious and beyond measure. And for this old preacher, I'm excited to be with you. Because this is the day when God opened up the greatest gift ever. Amen? Amen. And He gave us Jesus. And I know I may be rambling a little bit around about this subject, but I'm going to tell you this. There were some sad things going on in this scripture I read to you, but there were some exciting things. God overcame all the things that tried to prevent Jesus from coming into our life. And the world has tried for 2,000 years to keep Jesus out of our lives. But God saw a way. And so today I invite you to get excited. Put a smile on your face. Don't just be the number that made the grant, grant in the beginning, but be the grant in the end. Let your heart grow and feel the presence of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for the word you give us. Thank you, dear God, for letting us allow our hearts to grow to a, a measure like they've never grown before because, Lord, this is Christmas. Lord, I mean, this is Christmas, whether we're in a little old house or a great big mansion or on a hillside somewhere, wherever it is. God, this is the day that your son Jesus came in this world. And we celebrate. We're excited. And God, not only that, as the world tries to push you away, we want to draw you in. So Lord, let us be excited. And let us be like the hills that sing and the waves that clap. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And Lord, as we pause in this rejoicing, we also remember the gift that you gave us, not only on his birth, but Lord, on the cross of Calvary. So Lord, today we break bread. We break the bread that reminds us of the body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for us and for many. Lord, bless these elements as we take them. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ who came and surrendered for us. And as we are excited, we are grateful. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another therefore let us confess our sins before God and one another merciful, merciful God, God we confess, confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will we have broken your law we have rebelled against your love we have not loved our neighbors we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer an offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your heart, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast in His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in Your Holy Church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Remind you that all are invited to this table. This is the Lord's table, not our individual table, the church's table, but it's God's table. So as you come, you're invited to pray. If you'd like to leave a gift, a token for to help those in need at the altar, you can do that. All are invited as the ushers direct you. Would you come?
to extinguish the candles. Then after he does that, I'm going to have all the kids on to help me out in just a minute. We're so glad your families are here today. We had a good crowd on Christmas Eve, too. And I want to thank Dawn and her husband. They brought refreshments, and we had little snacks afterwards. We had communion, so we had a really good time together. Savior, Christ the King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 